Hey everyone, welcome back once again to the B-Movie Bunker. Today, we're staying right in 2017, and we're looking at Guardians of the Galaxy 2, brought to us by James Gunn. Same guy brought us the first one. All the same people, a couple new people. Uh, once again, Star-Lord and his buddies, Gamora, Drax, Rocket, and Baby Groot have to save the universe. Uh, this time from uh, Star-Lord's dad, apparently. So, uh, this one, man, you know... the. It's a hard thing to live up to the first one, because I love the first one so much. And I think in many ways this film does. I don't think it's as good as the first one. I think at times it gets a little too involved in being silly. Um, but I still have fun. I still laughed a lot. Um, I was worried that Baby Groot was going to be kind of like a Jar Jar Binks or in my general attitude that kids... Uh, the kid sidekick in a lot of movies tend to really kind of ruin movies, at least for me. Um... That didn't happen. I thought they used him well. Um, I didn't think they overused him. I didn't think they overused too much stuff, um, even though, as I said, it does get a bit silly at times. The effects are absolutely amazing, as I would expect. Um, and you, you get some more of the, the chemistry and the bond between these characters as they are growing uh, more. And speaking of growth, you get great growth from some of the uh, other characters, uh, particularly uh, Yondo. Uh, he, you know, man, just... Phenomenal uh, chemistry and growth for, for some of the characters. And, uh, you know, it's not something that you're really expecting to see a lot of in comic book films. And then in, in ways, I don't even consider this so much a comic book film as it is a space adventure. I mean, kind of a, a scale of 1 to 10, this is... Man, it's it's like a an acid field trip on a robotic kangaroo through the outback of your mind. Um, it's just... it's It's so frenetic and it's just constantly going and it's just there's always something happening even even the parts where it slows down it doesn't slow down for long and then stuff is happening again which some people may say that you know that well they just threw all this action at you so that they could get away without having a plot i'm like yeah there's a plot there it's not super deep but you do get some and you do get some great character moments um and I just, I had a blast. I've seen it twice already, and, and I life, loved it both times. I liked it more the second movie because there's little things you miss, which is one of the things with a film that is constantly moving and constantly going so fast is it's easy to miss little things, um, and you pick up things as you watch. And just, it, it had it had everything I wanted from it. It had action. It had some humor. It had, uh, it had feeling and emotion, man. Um... And you don't always get that in a lot of, you know, so a lot of films try to have that. A lot of these types of films try to have that emotion, but it always comes off as forced because it's just like, oh, you know, this detective, you know, is sad because, you know, his kid died. You know, he split up from his wife. I mean, how many times have we seen the exact same thing and it, it feels very forced? This, there's some who may say, oh, well, you know, this is going to, it's whatever. I thought they did a great job of it, and I think that's uh, partly the script. I think a big part of it is the actual cast. I think they have an insanely talented cast, and I, I didn't think I would ever say that about you know uh, Batista, that you know he, but he plays the role of Drax really, really well, um, and not just from the you know well of course he has no emotion, so he plays it well. No, I, I think he plays it well. Yes, the character has that literal sense to him, but I think he still shows. A fair amount of depth with that character, and I think you get that with a lot of the characters. I mean, you get a lot of depth with Rocket, which is an animated freaking raccoon. Um, so, and and I like the fact that it's not just the Star Lord show. I mean, yes, it's all about him and his dad, but there's so much going on with the supporting cast. I mean, you have Gamora and her sister Nebula, and there's that whole thing going on there, and you have Rocket just with his his angst and his anger at everything, um, and his it's all stemmed out of fear. So. I, if you like the first one at all, even a little bit, I can't see why you wouldn't see this. And even if you never saw the first one, you don't need to see it to see this one, but why haven't you seen the first one? Because you should, and then you should see this one, and then you should see them both together, which is what I plan to do as soon as I can. I want to watch them back to back and watch it as a, as a thing. And, oh my God, stay around for the credits. Five post-credit scenes. Five. And there's people who say, well, I don't know if you saw any reason for the... There's people who will complain about everything. They just will. And, and... You don't need to let those people bother you. You just need to go and do the things you want to do and have fun enjoying what you want to enjoy. Even if I don't enjoy it or the guy next to you doesn't enjoy it, your husband or wife doesn't enjoy it, it doesn't matter. It's all about you and what you find fun. So, with that in mind, until next time, stay safe out there in the wasteland, folks.